Hello once again and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, The Fan Treasure. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And as you remember, uh, in our last episode, we asked you to send us some questions that you would like to ask for us, Fen. One is what we suggested. Most people said about three. Yeah. yeah but that's okay. That's, that's fine. Not good to follow in directions, I can tell. <laughs> uh, anyway, the point is this. Uh, we will get to a few of those questions and do our best to come up with some answers or at least enforce the question. But before we do that, a lot of people are suggesting that we talk about the six questions with Forrest Fenn which is done on a website um, called Mysterious Writings, Treasure, Mystery, and Games. And this was done by a nice lady named Jenny Kyle back on February 4th of this year. And um, some of the questions uh, have some really interesting answers that Forrest gives back. For instance, uh, question one, it's been over eight years since you hid your treasure chest. Have you ever been tempted to zoom in on Google Earth to see if it's visible? Uh, and Forrest says, I have zoomed into the hiding place several times, but I wasn't looking for the treasure. And then what exactly were you looking for, Forrest? Uh, I, it cannot be seen on Google Earth. Well, mm. we had somebody that claimed that it could be. And, right. Uh, it was a very pixelated photo. Yeah. And it could be uh, questionable. The only changes to that site today are those that nature has made, Ronnie. So right. 10 years, not eight, 10 years. That's a lot of dirt. That's a lot of wind. That's a lot of snow. Trees may have fallen. Yeah, dog poop. Yeah. Bear poop. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things could have <clears throat> taken place and and changed over that time. Um, but I, I got to believe that uh, in my heart of heart, he has a camera. Yes. Well, and I'll tell you this also, Google Earth uh, is not updated every day. So it doesn't give you a true satellite view of what is down there at the second that you're looking at Google Earth. Uh, I just happened to be on Google Earth the other day. I was looking at my house and it had two cars in the driveway that I no longer own. <laughs> so been a while. It's it hasn't been updated, at least on my street for a while. Um, and I can't imagine that in a very rural area, it's not dated, it's not updated even that often. Are you, question two, are you fearful your special spot has lost its charm? Uh, Forrest says, I am almost umbilically attached to the spot. And as I approach 89 years, my desire is to be there. Uh, it is a strong desire. The immediate landscape will probably remain the same for as long as as time has to go so i guess what i interpret from that ronnie is that he would like to return to that spot uh and as he originally stated he'd like to his treasure to be found along with his bones right well and i do remember him saying at some point that these clues were almost time proof uh he felt that all of these clues would stand the thousand year test where, you know, I mean, outside of maybe a major flood or, you know, some of biblical proportions, uh, everything should be okay. So, I, I don't know. I, I think he is, like he says, he's very, he's very tied into his spot and hopefully it'll still be there when when somebody finds it. Next question. Many searchers feel they are battling minds with you as if they are playing a chess game to win the chest. Do you see your treasure hunt as a competitive competition between you and us, or do you feel that your job in writing the poem was actually an ally to help us to find your treasure? Why do you think no one has been able to say checkmate, Mr. Fenn? Uh, several dozen hunters have already claimed to possess the treasure, but none could tell me the correct hiding place or send me photos. That's what we're saying. Yep. Um, we get so many people saying that they have the ultimate solve. Right. Uh, one guy, I know that he's communicating with both of us, Ronnie, says that he has it in ink. Okay, great. It's the same right. thing as on my computer. <laughs> right. uh, ink makes no difference whatsoever. If you don't have a chest, you don't have nothing. Right. I almost said something else. <laughs> squat. Um, squat, you thank you. You don't got squat. 
Uh, several dozen hiding place photos. The treasure chest is still in the Rocky Mountains where I hid it more than eight years ago. All of the video makers and bloggers who have presented entertaining evidence to the contrary. <laughs> I think he may be referring to us. <laughs> well, not specifically, but through, through us to Glenn. Yes. Uh, are mistaken, he says. The poem was written to assist all searchers. In my mind, studying the clues is tantamount to using a roadmap to get from one place to another. Well, and, and this too, and I get so many people who think that Forrest is unbelievably clever and maybe slightly deceitful and is using words uh, in a way that directs people more to the treasure. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not familiar with the man. Is he really that brilliant that he could hide something using a, a map, in essence, with clues in it that people can't figure out? Okay. What if, <laughs> what if I have a million dollar bill? Okay. Actually, I do in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> and I go and I place it in an old rock quarry out off of Prairie City Road in Folsom, California. Where we used to, our band used to practice. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, okay. And I just go bury it underneath um, a really heavy rock. And I write a clue that says, I buried this million dollar bill under a rock somewhere in the United States. Go find it. Right. How long do you think that's going to go on? Hey, I'll tell you, even if you <laughs> narrowed it down to the city of Folsom, uh -huh. it could still go on for eternity. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, and so this is, and just how crazy that is, uh, I work in a law enforcement capacity at Folsom Dam, which is a national critical infrastructure here in Sacramento. <laughs> to be sure. And... Um, it was built in 1957, and a couple years ago, they were making some changes and improvements, and they were digging up some old rocks, and they ran across a piece of dynamite sticking out of a piece of granite that had been there since 1957. There was a hole drilled in this piece of granite. The dynamite never went off, and so... Everybody has to stop. We call our bomb squad. They come out and they detonate it. You know, they set a secondary blast off to detonate it. But that's, since 1957, nobody had found that piece of dynamite there. So is it possible that somebody's not going to find something that's, I forget what the dimensions are, 8 by 10 by something for the chest? Uh, 10 by 10 by 5. I think. There you go. Yeah, I think that's right. So is it possible that eight or more years could expire before somebody finds something of that size? Absolutely. And, you know, I said, sure, I've hid this million dollar bill somewhere in the United States, but it might as well, I, I'm gonna narrow it down. It's somewhere between Santa Fe, New Mexico <laughs> and Canada in the Rocky Mountains. Now, go find it. Right. You know, oh, by the way, it may be here, it may be there. Check this, brown house, blah, blah, blah. Your odds are just the same. <laughs> it is. It's the it, it, it's the truth. You're more likely to hit the lotto. You should probably just go buy lotto tickets. All right, I'll tell you what. So, they, yes, somebody said to me, have you even read the six questions? Yes, I've read the six questions. We've shared some of the responses. Okay, so there you go. Ronnie, how about some of the comments and questions that we received on our last video. Do you have one that you'd like to start with? Um, I have the one from the man who asked if the treasure chest would be, if he took a, a metal detector out there. Oh, right, right, okay. And he had a specific model of metal detector, and he asked if uh, his metal detector would be set off. And I think from what we know about it, that even the least expensive metal detector would go off uh, when you rendered over this chest. So, I mean, it's, I'm not sure that that's how Forrest wanted it done was, you know, foot by foot grid searching of the Rocky Mountains using a metal detector. But hey, 
Uh, Go ahead, take two weeks off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that would work. If that's your passion, knock yourself out. All right, here's uh, one from Rodney Greenway. And Rodney writes, question one, could the location of where warm waters halt change in the future? And two, do you consider a canyon a name that specifically says canyon, or does he consider any old valley a canyon? Uh, number three, when, I told you, we, we asked for one question. I'm not even close to done yet. When he said that the clues aren't part of any structure, and if we needed further elaboration on the word structure, then Google it. Did he mean a physical slash man-made structure or structure in the sense of arranging according to plan, give pattern to, or organization to? In other words, was he referring to a literary structure or actual buildings, houses, man-made features? Well, he said it's not in a man-made feature. Right. I know that to be true. Right. Um, so I've already forgotten what the first question was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could the warm location water. of her warm was. Um, again, he had said that his, his clues should last for a thousand years. So if it takes that long for some of you to find it, then it is what it is. But... I mean, as there is global weather changing, and so if it is literally where warm waters are halting, yeah, that could that could feasibly change. Um, and canyons will will every canyon that's here now be the, exactly the same in a thousand years? I'm not sure that you can say that safely. So uh, earthquake. Yeah, I mean there are, there are a lot of uh, f massive floodings, uh, forest fires cause erosion, and so I mean, you know, there are some some god type events that could cause uh, cause it to change. But I think, as he felt that his clues would stand the test of time. I'm thinking they probably will. One of our subscribers, a very nice lady named Lori James. Uh, this is slightly off topic, but I was talking about how Forrest has to pass the torch. She says, after Forrest passes, no one will take over. They aren't interested, nor does he want to leave them the headache. I feel like there is something in the chest to advise you, but perhaps it will remain a mystery for a very long time. He says on the last six questions, he was going to step back and use this time of his late life to spend time with his dog, Willie. You know what? Let me um, revert back to that real quick. And that's it right there. Here's what he says, and replying to the author of the six questions, Ronnie. Okay. Since these will be my last words on six questions, I would like to thank you for asking me to participate. It has been an enjoyable thinking experience over the years. I want to thank those of you who make up the community of searchers. It would be nice to meet each of you personally and share a bottle of Great Bet. <laughs> but alas, it is not to be. I have decided to drastically curtail my social activities related to the chase. The number of emails that enter my inbox each day have become more than I can handle, so it is time for me to step back from my computer. I hope those to whom I cannot respond will blame my stamina and not my heart. I am content with knowing the chase has rooted itself in hearts that will help it grow far beyond what I first imagined it could. I'll be spending time with my little dog, Willie, and watching the seasons pass. There you go. So he does talk about Willie. And I, I'll, I'll tell you, I've, I keep flip-flopping on this whole idea because we get so many people who said they have solved it and their solve is there's nothing there. So uh, is the treasure there? Uh, you know what? For a minute, I thought it probably is gone. But I'm kind of leaning the other way recently and thinking, I don't know. I think if somebody had found it, that they would have alerted Forrest and he would say something. Um, there we have, we have one very passionate viewer who has, uh, he said that there is a, a place carved out in a, uh, like a mountainside basically, that is the exact dimensions of the chest. And it's where all of his clues led him. And that, you know, it's just big enough for the chest and there's no chest in it. And why else would anybody carve out 
this space in a mountainside of those exact same dimensions. I don't know. Maybe somebody had the same solve you did and then thought they might be a little bit, uh, you know, provocative and carve a hole in this mountainside to make other people believe that it's gone also. Um, who knows? People are people do weird things and sometimes they do mean things. Yeah. So everybody's so different. Everybody has a different solve. Everybody believes their solve is the one. Everybody believes that it's been taken when it's not where they say it's supposed to be. Right. Um, you know, honestly, there was another comment I had here that I, I thought was really um, interesting. Um, here's one. Only one question he refused to answer for me on three separate occasions. Is the box in water? Um, Man in the Park says... Uh, I don't want to read that one. I'm sorry. Um, I, I think we've... I think we've kind of breached oh. this before where we said it's not in physically in water. In fact, I believe Forrest even said that at some point Yeah, that it's not underwater. Right. Uh, he said it is wet. Now the interpretation I think that we all believe is that's because nine months out of the year it's covered with snow. Right. Yeah. So yeah, in that sense it's wet, but is it underwater? No. Yeah. Uh, DW says, guys, only Fen knows where it is, and he is taking that to his grave. Shiloh will have nothing to do with it. A grandson. torch doesn't need to be passed. Forrest has given everyone enough. I don't completely believe that. I, I believe he's given us enough. In fact, I believe he's given as much as he's going to give. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, but I also believe that... You know, why does Forrest want that bracelet returned? Do you really think it's just because of sentimental value? Or it does it have an exceptional worth? Um, and so, if, if it does have an exceptional worth, then Shiloh would have to... Well, no. Then someone has to be in a position to know that the treasure has been found. Right. And in order to know that, you have to know where the treasure is to verify it. So, yes, someone has to have the torch passed to them, Ronnie. Well, and I, I I agree to a certain extent. I believe that the the little bracelet that is in there is the way to say, yes, that is the bracelet I put in the chest. It's worth a, a nickel someplace, but that is what identifies it as the treasure I hid. Um, yeah. And so then you can have a hundred percent verification that yeah, it's been found. Um, I'm not sure though. I mean, maybe Forrest might pass on in his will. This is what the bracelet looks like that I've hidden with the treasure so that when somebody shows you this picture, you can say, you know, without a doubt, yes, that is the treasure. Um, Although I don't know that it, that the torch has to be passed. I think, as we were talking before, uh, you know, if, if two people know a secret, <laughs> the only way you can be 100% sure it doesn't get passed on is if one of those persons is dead. Yeah, it's a Ben so, Franklin quote. Yeah, so I'm not sure that he would tell anybody. I think he's perfectly content. If it goes a thousand years before it's found, yeah, so be it. Yeah, well, if it goes a thousand years, it's going to certainly outlive Shiloh, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, maybe there's a plan in place for that. I, I'm just not sure. All right, well, look, that's about all the time we have this, today for this episode. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Uh, you can always reach us. In fact, I'm going to put our email addresses up here. Uh, we do get a lot of email, a lot of email. Some of them are really, really long, too. Yep. Uh, so we will do our best. Uh, we try to reply to your comments on our YouTube channel as best we can. Sometimes it's easier time-wise if you send us an email. Um, it's a format for a lengthier conversation, and um, we can reply to those uh, at our leisure. Yep. All right. Uh, subscribe to our channel, and when you do, please click the bell. That way you'll get notifications each time a new episode comes out. Uh, we're back to doing maybe one, uh, maybe 
one a week or maybe two a month of the Fen episodes as we come across more information or we have more questions from you to discuss. Yep. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Thank you to Trico Welding Supplies and Magna Gas. Uh, we'll see you on the next Better So Smart. Bye-bye.